In this video, I'm gonna show you how to rebuild a BorgWarner S400 series servo. This one, I think is a BorgWarner S475 off of a Detroit diesel. Here's the rebuild kit that we have. This is a kit that we do sell, and it's also one that we use to rebuild our BorgWarner S400 series servos. I will link to this kit in the description box in case you want to buy it for your turbo rebuild. This kit also includes four piston ring seals. One is the front seal and the other three are rear seals. Two of them on the left are actually for the dual piston ring seals for the rear seal. And the one to the right of that is the single piston ring seal. So you'll only need the two or the one. Now put the rear piston ring seal in the bearing housing to check to make sure that it seals properly. And then the next thing you want to do is install your bearing C-clips. Once you have them installed, make sure they're properly seated. And I usually air out the bearing housing in case I got anything inside of it. Now insert your rear bearing and be sure to add plenty of oil. The guy that owns this turbo has a trucking company. So he told me that he could get these turbos brand new for $680. So I can't save him a whole lot of money on this model, but I know that I can save him a lot more money on the VGT model turbos that are like $2,000 or more. However, since I could save him about half the amount of buying a new one, uh, we went ahead and decided to rebuild this servocharger anyway. Now insert your rear C-clip to retain the bearing. The way that I install these is I always put the rounded face towards the bearing just so that it won't damage the bearing as if the same situation as if you put it uh, the sharper edge towards the bearing, then it could be hazardous to the bearing. Add oil to the bearing housing front bearing seat and install the front bearing. Install the C-clip to retain the front journal bearing. Install the thrust hardware. This is a part of the thrust spacer. There's two parts to the thrust spacer and one thrust collar. Install the thrust bearing. This is the 360 degree brass copper bar machine thrust bearing. And Next, you want to install the other part of the thrust spacer and add plenty of oil. Then next, install your piston ring seal. This is the smallest seal in the kit. Then add oil under the seal. Then install the front collar with the seal into the uh, front seal plate. And install the bearing housing o-ring onto the uh, seal plate. Install the oil deflector into the bearing housing. Now you can install the seal plate into the bearing housing, but make sure you add plenty of oil to the seal, the rubber seal, to make sure that it will go into the bearing housing easily.
easier to use a socket and a press to press this down in or you could also use a socket and a hammer and lightly tap it in. I couldn't show you that on video because it was just too complicated but uh, then you want to install the C-clip to retain the front seal plate. Next, install the bearing housing o-ring. Some models had a bearing housing o-ring and some models did not. This model did not, but I'm going to machine the compressor housing to allow the bearing housing o-ring to fit. Here's the difference in the two rear seals. One is takes two seals on the turbine and the other is just a single piston ring seal. The turbo that I'm rebuilding requires both piston ring seals. In order for this to work correctly without blowing oil, uh, each of the piston ring seals must be, the gaps must be facing 180, 180 degrees opposite of each other. Otherwise, you'll have problems with blowing oil past the seals. Be sure to add plenty of oil on and under the two rear seals so they have plenty of lubrication for startup. When installing the shaft into the bearing housing, you must align the seals and the gaps 180 degrees apart. You will also need to center up the seals so that when you press in the shaft that it will go in without the seal binding. Because this turbo has two rear seals, you cannot spin the shaft while pressing it in. That does help center the seals to make it go in easy, but the problem is if you do that, it will throw off the alignment of the seals, which has to be, the gaps have to be exactly 180 degrees apart, so this turbo won't blow oil. Be sure to add Loctite and torque down the compressor nut properly. Also, uh, make sure that you line up the balance marks if you had this assembly balanced. When we balanced this turbo, it was originally 3 gram inch off, which is actually in spec, but we were able to get it below 1 gram inch. Strobe light will allow you to see any imbalance in the assembly. Wherever the strobe light continues to hold a spot, at the top of the wheel is where the wheel needs to be balanced. If the strobe light does not hold a consistent position and the needle on the meter reads close to zero, then the part is perfectly balanced. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comment section and leave me some comments of what you would like to see next.